let us see the structure of glucose now. So first let me write the, uh, I have written the uh, structure of glucose. Usually the glucose when we write, we always write it as D plus glucose. Now this has nothing to do with dextrorotatory, okay. So now I will explain that. So before that let me tell you about the isomers. So if you look at this open chain structure, there are like you no know, 6 carbon. So let me number it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Between 2 and 5, like all these carbons are like you know chiral carbon or the, they are the stereo centers. So n will be equal to 4 because there are 4 stereo centers. So the number of stereo isomers will be 2 power n. So that is 2 power 4 which will be 16 stereo isomers we will get stereo isomers. So from glucose we can write 16 stereo isomers. Now coming back to the structure, why do we write D glucose? That's because we considered the structure with respect to glyceraldehyde, okay, or we compared the structure with glyceraldehyde. So glyceraldehyde has this structure. This is D glyceraldehyde, this is the L glyceraldehyde. This positive and negative means or uh, like you know the, about the optical rotation, whether it is dextrorotatory or levorotatory. Now here this carbon, okay, see here, first and second carbon, let me start from here. This resembles, this part resembles, like you know, that is of glyceraldehyde, is same as here. Or I can say the glucose structure, that is this part will resemble glyceraldehyde. So that is why because it resembles D-glyceraldehyde, we give the structure as D-glucose. If this structure resembles L-glyceraldehyde, then we will give the name as L-glucose. Now let us see the cyclic structure of glucose. First let me I'll show you that this is your open chain structure. So how do you write the cyclic structure, okay? So when you see it in the book, it is little difficult, but it's actually easy. See here, let me number first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, okay? So I have numbered like this, the number of carbon. So now here what you do is, like you know, so in the fifth carbon, remove the hydrogen as H plus. Okay. And here in the first carbon, okay, this pi electron will get shifted like this, O will become minus and carbon will become plus. So what you have to do is connect the C1 and C5, okay. So now this H plus which has come out will join with O. So that's why I have written, so now let me number here also to show you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. So in the first carbon, O minus is there, so this H plus has gone in uh, connected here, okay. Now, this is your minus now, this minus will go and get connected to the C plus. See here, this you had a C plus here and O minus, sorry, uh, here it will be O minus. So this O and this one will get connected and this O I have written it here. So this is your six membered, six membered cyclic structure, membered cyclic structure. So it's very easy to write, just remember this way. Now this also can be written in the other proper cyclic manner. So I've written two different ways, okay. So this is called alpha D-glucose and this is called beta D-glucose. Now what is the difference? The same cyclic structure here I've written. So here this is the first carbon, second carbon, third, fourth, fifth and this is your sixth carbon. See here in the first carbon, okay, here I have put the OH here down and in the second carbon also I have put the OH down. So between one and two, the two OH groups are down. Otherwise I have just written, just write it like, you know, opposite here H and OH. So in the third carbon it will be OH and H and so on, okay. Now this, this is called your alpha D-glucose and the beta D-glucose, what you have to do is just between the first and the second carbon, push this OH up, okay. So, and the hydrogen down. And if you see here, the same structure only between first and second carbon, there's a difference. So, this structure is called your beta D-glucose and always put this one, the CH2 OH group on top of it, okay. So, that's an easier way of representing the cyclic structure. Now, they might ask you, among beta D, uh, sorry, alpha D-glucose and beta D-glucose, which is more stable? See here, if you see the alpha D-glucose, between the first and second carbon, the OH, both are 
like you know facing downwards. So here these two will have a steric factor or steric hindrance because of the bulky group present on the same side. Now here if you see it, there is no steric hindrance and all other groups are if you see one is on the top other one is down all the bulky group are like you know taking alternate positions. So if you consider between alpha D glucose and beta D glucose this is said to be more stable compared to the alpha D glucose. Now let us see the evidence like you know which proves that glucose also exhibits a cyclic structure. So what are the two structures we saw? There is a Fisher projection where free CHO group, there is an open chain structure where we have a free CHO group and the Hewart structure, this free CHO group convert, gets converted to a ether like structure, okay. There is a O linkage here. So these are the two structures which are in equilibrium. So now when we take the cyclic structure, actually if you see the other structure, the open uh, chain structure which has a free CHO group should react with all these three reagents that is sodium bisulfide, 24 dinitrophenylhydrazine and shift space. But whereas the cyclic structure, when we take that cyclic structure, there is no CHO group so it does not give these three reactions. So no reaction with all these three reagents. So this proves, so I write it as no reaction. So this proves that glucose also uh, exhibits the cyclic form. 